Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Earth Science. Glad to have you guys. We are going to move on now from scientific methods to start into the third part of chapter one, which is called Intro to the SI. SI is an acronym. We'll understand that in just a second here. So make sure you know where we are at. We'll continue on taking notes in this section. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's jump into it. In science, we will use the International System of Units, which is abbreviated SI. Yes, that doesn't sound anything like International System of Units. It should say ISOS, ISOU, but it doesn't. I don't know who you want, who you want to blame. The whole world, because we're the only ones that don't want to use this type of measuring system. <clears throat> so, off my soapbox, when discussing length in this chapter, we will use meters, okay? Now, tools to measure length will be meter sticks, rulers, meter tapes, etc., all regarding the metric system. Okay, let's take some notes here. Here's the important pieces you need to get. The first piece we're going to discuss is mass. Mass, by definition, is the amount of matter contained within an object. Mass does not change with gravity unless you chop your arms off or gain weight or lose weight. You're really not going to change your mass if you leave this planet or not. <clears throat> and mass is measured in grams or another word, or another option could be kilograms as well. Depends on if you get to a heavy enough object. Now, to measure mass, you would use balances, scales, and a spring scale, for example, also shown correspondingly with these three pictures. Very important to understand, mass is the amount of matter contained within an object. Weight is not the same as mass. Many people confuse that, and we need to separate that. By definition, weight measures the gravitational force that it has on mass. They are related, but they are not the same. For example, weight, uh, weight on the moon is one-sixth of your current weight on the Earth. Why? Because of the amount of g-force, gravitational force, being applied due to the mass of the object that it is affecting, Earth or Moon. Weight is measured in Newtons with a capital N as written here. And again, your weight will depend and change depending on where you are in the universe. Now, you would also use balances, scales, and springs to, uh, spring scales to measure this, but it's a different measurement you were looking at. So mass is the quantity of material and weight is the force on that quantity. And there's a video right here I'd recommend you guys watching when you open up this website. And it's a really good tune to Sweet Carolina about the difference between mass and weight. He does a really good job. He might ruin your tune forever for it. However, it's still awesome. You should watch it. Okay. <laughs> I'll leave, the, you, leave you to your own demise on this one. <laughs> Let's move on. Okay, gravity. Ladies and gentlemen, gravity is the force that exists between all objects. Even you have force. Planets have force. Stars have that force. Okay, That's why the Earth has a moon. The Earth has a stronger gravitational force than the Moon's. The Moon still has its own, so the Moon is pushing away from, but yet not an equal amount away from the Earth. But the Earth is strong enough to keep it really close and not let it leave. But the Moon's gravitational force will prevent it from uh, assimilating or colliding with the Earth. It is also measured in Newtons, as weight is. Gravity is dependent, okay, this is the important piece. It's dependent on the mass of that object. 
So the larger the mass, and that means the more matter that's in the object, the more gravity it has. So our sun has a, sig a significant amount of mass. As a matter of fact, it's 99.84%, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, of the entire solar system. Hence the reason why we orbit the sun without leaving its, uh, leaving its orbit. Okay, next. The next one you need to understand is volume okay, of the SI unit. Volume relates to how much space, okay, how much space an object occupies. That's really important, how much space. If you're in an elevator, you occupy a certain amount of space within that elevator, and you can tell due to its proximity to you. In a room, it's harder to see, but the closer you get in terms of walls or whatever you're in, you can understand how much space you take up in that object. You can measure the volume of regular shaped objects such as squares for example by multiplying its length times its width times its height if it's a square uh, circle it's a little bit different but similar formula likewise with triangles and volume is measured in cubic which is this three right here it's a cubic and then whatever unit you're working with meters or centimeters, you could go down to millimeters, you could go back up and above to kilometers. It all depends on what you're measuring. Or if you're measuring a liquid, something that does not have a definite uh, specific shape in which it can be measured to, obviously if you put it inside of a container then it forms the shape of that container, but liquid itself does not have a definite shape therefore it's hard to measure that we use displacement uh, excuse me we use um, yeah displacement or the volume that it fills inside of a specific container using liters or milliliters as the units if you have an, an object that is um, irregular shaped irregular shaped you could test the de uh, test the volume of it by submerging it inside of, uh, excuse me, submerging it inside of a liquid using liters or milliliters correspondingly to uh, to convert it on the initial height to the final height of the water or a liquid being used, and that will give you the with some calculation um, back to the uh, cubic form of units from liters, you could find out the actual volume of a irregular shaped object. Okay, moving on. And the final piece is density. You must know math, uh, mass, you got no math obviously to do it. <laughs> you need to know mass, you need to know volume. If you have those two, you can apply that simple formula, density equals mass divided by volume to give you density. So what is density? Density is formed by how much matter is inside an actual space. Again, is defined by how much matter is inside an actual space. Density, density is similar to mass except it's about how much you can stuff into that area. For example, if you took a block of wood that's exactly one cubic meter and a block of cement one cubic meter. That means when I say cubic, we're referencing what, ladies and gentlemen? Volume. So the volume is the same. One cubic meter. One cubic meter for wood, one cubic meter for cement. Would you be able to tell me which one has a higher density rating? Naturally, you're choosing cement. Yes, that's correct. So why? Intuitively, you'd say that. Why? Because if the volume is the same, which is the denominator in this simple mathematical equation, it's the denominator, if you have a mass, which probably speaking, the wood is not going to have as much mass as cement if, this, if we're talking about the same size of object, correct? So wood's probably, depending on what wood it is, you're probably looking at a couple of kilograms 
versus cement that's probably tens of kilograms. So the larger the number in the numerator, the larger the overall number, which is density. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Those are the three or four main principles you need to understand that we are where we are going to apply the SI units in. And uh, we're going to do three different labs that tie to this. We're going to do first the Magnus effect. Then we'll do the FET density lab. And then finally, we'll do the rock and mineral density lab. All done in class. You need to be here to do at least this one here, minimum. This one can technically be done online. This one can still be done in um, online and at home. I will uh, have these labs posted with instructions to indicate it, and you will understand more. We will get to watch these videos to uh, illustrate what the Magnus Effect is. I would recommend you doing that prior to you doing the Magnus Effect lab if you were gone. It will give you an understanding of what it is and then how we are to go about doing it. Any questions? Okay. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you tomorrow.